Mr. District Attorney, starring David Bryan. Mr. District Attorney, champion of the people, defender of truth, guardian of our fundamental rights to life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. And it shall be my duty as district attorney not only to prosecute to the limit of the law all persons accused of crimes perpetrated within this county, but to defend with equal vigor the rights and privileges of all its citizens. This is David Bryan. In a moment, we'll bring you another case from the files of Mr. District Attorney. But first, a word from our sponsor. And now, here is our star, David Bryan, as Paul Garrett, Mr. District Attorney. As district attorney for this county, it's my job to prevent crimes as well as solve them. But sometimes you can't prevent them. Sometimes you can only pick up the trail after the violence has begun. In this case, it began 18 hours before the first police report reached my office. All right, stop the car. Stop the car, I said. Ellie, put that gun away. Ellie. Shut up, Grandpa. Come on, pull up right here. Ellie, don't be stupid. Take the gag out of his mouth. Give the man a chance. You can't. Why? Would he give us a chance? Look at him. Look at his eyes bug out. He thought he knew all about us. Well, here's something he didn't know. Ellis, you can't kill a man in cold blood. No? Watch. See, Grandpa? See how easy it is? I knew you were a cheap little no-good punk, Ellis, but I didn't think that you were a murderer. Come on, come on, let's dump him out of here. Here, I got his wallet. One thing I hate, Ellis, is a killer. I hate killers. Now look, Grandpa, you're in this up to your lower plate. Now come on, give me a hand. Grab his ankles. Come on, come on, will you? Okay. Swing his feet up. I'll dump him right here. These high weeds. Uh, you, you think the law won't find him here? Sure, they'll find him. But let them try to find us. Come on, shove. There. Pleasant dreams, Mr. Hicks. Okay, shove over, Grandpa. I'll drive back. Killers, Ellie. I hate killers. I hate killers, too. They're easy to hate when it's your job to study their handiwork and track them down. Harrington and I picked up the tracks on this case in the county morgue. Twenty-two years' service in this place still gives me the willies. You too, Chief? Sure does. This one, Harrington? Uh, next one. All right, let's take a look. Hmm. Yeah, three shots at close range. Like maybe he was looking right down the muzzle of the gun. Somebody else's gun. Is he a John Doe? Yeah, he was until an hour ago. His wife identified him. His name is Hicks. Alfred Hicks. He's an insurance investigator. Uh, he was, I mean. What company? Globe, I think. Yeah, that's what Lieutenant Padway said. Globe Casualty Company. I asked Miss Miller to call them and find out what claim Six was working on. I'm good. Where was the body found? Mm, in a vacant lot behind a motel way out on South Street. No identification on him at all. His wife called the cops when he didn't come home last night. Padway and Homicide brought it down here for a look, and uh, that's what she saw. Uh, 
Washington, go on over to Homicide and find out what Lieutenant Padway's learned from Mrs. Hicks. I'll call the office and see if Miss Miller's learned anything from the insurance company. Okay, Chief. We'll see you later. You mind if I use this phone? Thanks. Hello, Miss Miller. Oh, Mr. Garrett, we've been waiting to hear from you. I've just been talking to the chief investigator at Globe Casualty. Well, what did you learn? Well, he said Alfred Hicks had been assigned to a stolen car claim. A big stolen car claim, incidentally. Oh? How big? An auto carrier loaded with four new sedans was hijacked about 14 miles from the factory. Do we have a report on that? We do now. It's on your desk. Fine. Mr. Hicks had been checking the want ads for any slightly used cars that might be for sale. His last call had been at the Sleep Easy Motel on South Street. Well, that was his last call, all right. He was seeing a private party named Thompson. Did you call the motel? Yes, sir. There was a Mr. and a Mrs. Thompson. They checked out about seven last night. Mm, that figures. Look, if Harrington calls in before I get back to the office, send him over to the Sleep Easy Motel. Yes, sir. Tell him to get a description of the Thompsons and any leads on where they might be. I'll see you in about 20 minutes. Will you forget it? I know what I'm doing. But you promised me faithfully that there wouldn't be any more... I'll see you tonight. Now, what are you looking at, Grandpa? The loving young husband hangs up on his wife. Why don't you mind your own business, huh? Irma is my business. She's my granddaughter. And my wife. And if I'd had my say about her marrying... You didn't have any say. You were doing time, remember? Yeah, I was doing time all right. But I've done my time. And anyway, I was up on a good, honest forgery rap, not murder. Shut up. Bad enough, Irma's married to a car thief. How'd she like it if she knowed you were the killer, too? Shut up, I said. Easy, sonny, easy. I ain't afraid of that gun of yours. I already messed up my life. I ain't got much left to lose, except... Uh, maybe Irma. Yeah. Listen, Grandpa. A truck left the plant 20 minutes ago for Woodside. We got about an hour and a half to meet it. Let's get going. Not me, Sonny. What do you mean, not you? I told you before, Ellie, that gun don't scare me. I got nothing left to lose. Except Irma. Yeah, except... You know, Ellie, I really believe you'd do it to her, too. I really believe it. You coming with me or not? Yeah. Yeah, I'm coming. You want this last bench of pink slips? Yeah. And run them off yourself. We got enough time. The truck should be here. You make the decision, Sonny. It's your deal, all of it. You print the slips. You make the phony license plates. You plan the hijacking. You do the killing. Okay, this is the spot. The auto carrier is just coming over that hill. Think you can drive this truck, Grandpa? I drove it last time, didn't I? Yeah. But I paid a lot of loot for this wagon, and it's helped me get a lot more. I'm sentimental about it. <laughs> I didn't think you could be sentimental about anything. Here comes our sucker. Yeah, rear axle's locked. 
Can you give me a hand? Yeah, sure thing. I hope you got a good flashlight on you. Yeah. Yeah, these things always happen after the sun goes down, it seems. It's the rear axle. Here. Uh, let's take a look here. Man. Looks all right to me. Maybe it just... Hey! Okay, Grandpa, you drive this one. I'll drive his. What are you going to do with that driver, Ellie? Don't worry, I'll take care of him. Get going. Go on, Grandpa, move, will you? Go on! Morning, Miss Miller. Good morning, Mr. Garrett. Hines and check in yet? Yes, sir. I'm typing up his report now. He's in your office. Good. Ah, hi, Chief. Hi. How did you make out, Hines? Well, I got kind of a fake description of the Thompsons, if that's what their name is. I gave it to Miss Miller. The guy is young, early 20s, curly hair, nervous, smokes a lot. Girl is the same age, about... Has one of them new style haircuts all over her head, you know? Reddish hair. Kind of pretty from what the motel guys said. But you know how motel guys are. That's vague, all right. Uh, One thing he said, though. He said there was an old guy with the Thompsons. Uh, Seemed to be a relative. Like a grandfather or something. Excuse me. Yes? Did you order the morning papers, Mr. Garrett? Oh, yes. Will you bring them in, Miss Miller? All of them? Yes, please. All of them. Why the papers, Chief? You cleaning out bird cages or something? You and I are going to check the one ads. One ads? Another auto carrier was hijacked last night. No kidding. That makes two. Yeah, two. From the same assembly plant. Four brand new cars on it. Two hijackings, two murders. Two murders? The driver of the auto carrier. He was found on the highway last night. Harrington, you and I are going to check the ads for slightly used automobiles. Just the way that insurance investigated it. Only he ended up in the morgue. Here are the papers, Mr. Garrett. Oh, thank you. Well, Harrington, I wonder where we'll end up. Back to David Bryan, starring as Paul Garrett, Mr. District Attorney. Two auto carriers had been hijacked. Eight brand new cars had been stolen. And two men had been murdered in cold blood. For three days, Harrington and I and other members of my staff tracked down every lead, including the ads for slightly used cars. No luck. Three days. Four days. Five days. Somewhere in this teeming city, our killer was still free. Free to kill again. Ellie, I wish you'd stop that pacing. Ellie, please. Your wife's talking to you, Sonny. I heard her. Ellie, will you stop? Stop what? Stop this. Stop that. Stop the car deal. Stop the phony licenses. Stop living, why don't you tell me? Now, there's an interesting idea. You shut up. I've taken enough from you. Ellie. Oh. Ellie, what's wrong with you? Oh, you know, Irma. This is a big job. We still got two cars left over from the last job. And so far all week, we only got one call about our ad. An old maid school teacher didn't even have her driver's license yet. Oh, I knew you shouldn't have pulled this job. I didn't even know about the first one until after it was done. There's lots you don't know, honey. Shut up, Grandpa. Ellie, you promised me there wouldn't be any more. I only helped on this one because you promised oh, me you'd stop. Oh, will you? No. No, I won't forget it. You won't let me. I won't let you. No. You're so tense and, and nervous. So... What do you expect? Hot cars stashed away all over town and us holed up in this flea bag motel waiting for one ads to pay off. Maybe we should have stayed at the sleep easy. Lots of action there. It's more than that, Ellie. It's the way you talk, the way you look. 
He looks so cold and hard, like... Well, like a... A real... Like a real what? Go on, say it. Like a real crook, she means. Or even a killer. I told you to keep your big mouth shut. Ellie, stop it! I've taken all from this old man is going to give. Ellie, put down that gun. Ellie! Gun, where'd you get it? Hey, Mama. Just see that this grandfather of yours doesn't loss up this whole deal. I don't trust him. Yeah. Uh, hi. You the party running the ad for the slightly used car? Oh. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I'm the party. I. Oh, uh, uh, that your missus in there? Uh, yeah, yeah. The, the, the car's out here. Uh, my name's Harris. Joe Harris, Mr. Uh... Johnson. Uh, that's Mrs. Johnson. How do you do? I am Mrs. Johnson. And this gentleman? Uh, uh, Mr. McCabe, my wife's grandfather. Howdy. Yeah, I'm glad to know you, Mr. McCabe. McCabe, eh? Oh, Mr. McCabe isn't feeling so good. Uh, my wife has to take care of him. Oh, that a fact. Well, I have a little foot trouble myself, right? Yeah, well, the, uh, the car's right over here. Oh, not bad. Not bad at all. Practically brand new. Hasn't even been all broken in yet. Just a few hundred miles on it. See? Yep. That's what the speedometer says, all right. Hey, these tires are in good shape, too, ain't they? I told you. Not even broken in yet. Uh, why are you selling it, Mr. Johnson? Hmm? Oh, you know, I, uh, I bit off more than I can chew. I need the cash. Sometimes a guy gets in over his head. Yeah, sometimes they do. Uh, you mind if I look under the hood? Go to it. Say, hey, that motor is clean, all right. Real clean. Almost like it wasn't even used. I told you. If it was any newer, you'd have to pay new car prices. Best one I've seen today. How much? Two thousand flat. Eighteen hundred? I'm interested. Two thousand. Take a ride in it and you'll see why. All right, I'll tell you what. I'll go home and get the missus. Then we'll let her drive it. If she likes it, I'll go get the two grand. Okay? Uh... Well, you know, a car like this won't last long, and that ad brings in a lot of calls. Okay, I'll give you a deposit. I'll hold it for an hour or so. Twenty-five, all right? Well, uh, no longer than an hour. It's all the cash I got on me. Uh, mind giving me a receipt? Hmm? Oh, no, not at all. Uh, here, this envelope is good enough. It's only for an hour. Okay. Mm. Hey, uh... Now, you won't be more than an hour, will you? Oh, don't worry. I don't want to lose a deal like this. I'll get the wife and see you before an hour, maybe. This your car? Yeah. I'll sure be glad to get rid of this clunk. See you. Miss Miller. Chief there? Yes, he is. Just a moment. Hello, Harrigan. Uh, take this motor number down, Chief, before I forget it. Okay. 356P7338. You got it? Got it. Why do I check it on the motor numbers of the stolen cars? How about a raise and pay? It matches. 356P7338. It matches, all right. Where did you find it? Thompson's name is Johnson now. Young fellow in his early 20s, curly hair. That's a pretty wife with him, reddish hair. And an old geezer supposed to be a grandfather. Where are they, Arjun? The Stateside Motel on Highway 99 near Academy Street. I gave him 25 bucks in marked bills to hold the car for an hour. All right, we'll be down there in about 25 minutes. I'll get Lieutenant Padway and some men. You keep your eye on the place and see if they don't check out all of a sudden. That's the Stateside Motel, uh, Highway 99 near Academy Street, right? Right, Chief. They're in cabin number three. And tell Padway not to use the sirens. Okay. Good luck. Did you hear all that, Miss Miller? Yes, sir. I'll call homicide. Tell Padway I'll meet him in front of the building. Yes, sir. Come on. Come on. Well, 
I think we finally hooked a sucker. He... Hey, where's the old man? He... he said he was hungry. I told you to watch him. I told you. For Pete's sake, Gilly. Grandpa just went to get us some sandwiches. When? When? Why, you were talking to that man. And... Wait. Let go of my arm. Why'd you let him go? I told you not to let him go. I told you to watch him. Gilly, stop it. You... Let me go. You know what I think? I think you're gone crazy. I think you're gone right out of your head. Why should you be so scared of Grandpa? What did he ever do for you to be scared of? Why should you be so scared of everybody and, and everything? Why, Ellie? Why should you be so... <laughs> both of you. You and that old man. You both had to turn me in so you can take my... That's why you let the old guy go, so he can call the cops. Get away from the door. No! Get away from the door. I'm a soldier. Let's go, Nelly. Get away from the door, I said. You are a killer, aren't you? My grandpa said you're a real killer. Only I didn't believe it. I didn't believe you could be that rotten and crazy. Hiya, Mr. Johnson. Guess I got back a little early, huh? Uh, yeah, 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 Harris. Uh, you said about uh, an hour. Well, I figured it this way. On the way home, I said to myself, why don't I buy the car and surprise the little woman? That'll keep her happy and me happy and... What are you staring at? That... That police car out there. Police car? Oh, that's probably just... There's a... two of them. He's a they... killer, mister! He's got a gun! Are you... Get in here. Get in fast. That won't help you, Buster. Get in, I said. You're a cop, ain't you? Ain't you? What'd you expect, dancing girl? See, I brought some friends. All right, Johnson, or whatever your name is. Open up. Watch your chief. He's going to shoot. That won't help you one bit, chum. We've got more men, more guns, and more patience than you have. Give up, Ellie. Please. Please give up. Please. Go on and shoot, coppers. I got my wife and one of your men in here with me. If I get it, they get it. Now we just wait and see. It's no use, Sally. Give up. Please. All right, you two. Get over there, away from the window. Go on. Over against that wall. Both of you. Okay, now stay there. If you try to separate, I'll kill you. Hey, Johnson! How do we know our man hasn't gotten it already? Not a word from either one of you. Not a word. Prove he's alive, Johnson, or we'll blow that cabin sky high. We mean it, Johnson. Ellie, let him talk. Let him say something. Okay, cop. Tell those boy scouts you're still alive. It's all right, Chief. I'm right here and so is his wife. But you better do like he says, Chief, because he's armed and he's dangerous. All right, right, all right, that's enough. Hey, what the... What are you... Thanks for the chance. Fight's been now. Hey, let go. Let go of my arm. That's a good boy. Oh, come on, killer. Your wife will open the door and you'll walk through it. Some pals you've got cover. They know you're in here, but they shoot anyway. Sure. Why do you think they wanted to hear me talk? They could tell where I was so they could shoot where I wasn't. Just enough to get you off guard. You all right, Harrington? Yeah. Yeah, I'm okay, Chief. Here's our gun-happy friend. What? What are you going to do with him? Well, let the court decide that. You're his wife? Yes. I imagine you're involved in all this, too. Yes. Yes, I am. I hope you'll be willing to tell us about it. She don't have to tell you a thing. She's my wife. She can't testify against me. No, but I sure can, Ellie. I can tell plenty. That's the grandfather, Chief. I can tell you gentlemen all you want to know about this cheap, two-bit murdering little punk. He's in this, too. He's in it up to his dirty old neck. I told you a hundred times, Sonny, I got nothing left to lose. I'd like to do one decent service to the world while I still got the chance. Grandpa, no. No. Sorry, Irma, honey. But putting Ellis away is it. I hate killers. <laughs> the 
the star of Mr. District Attorney, David Bryan, with a word about the program you have just heard. Perhaps you read about it in your newspapers. The young man we call Ellis was tried and convicted of first-degree murder, three counts. His wife, Irma, and her grandfather, Harold McCabe, are now serving sentences for grand theft. Now, this is David Bryan inviting you to join us when we present our next case based on the facts of crime from the files of Mr. District Attorney. <laughs> 